Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Britt, creator of The Style Shaker, your guide to cleaner, greener, better for you beauty, skincare, and beyond. I try these products out for you, share my honest reviews. Also, you can have a better idea of what to buy and more importantly, what potentially not to buy. Today, I'm gonna review the Mara Algae and Zinc Sea Kale Sunscreen. Oh God, SPF 30. So if you're in the market for a cleaner SPF or you're looking at this one, before you buy it, check out the following review. Here we go. FYI, this product was gifted from Integrity Botanicals. You're still gonna get my honest review as always. If you enjoy getting those, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you wanna keep seeing more and let's just dive right in. $52 for this bottle it is really an SPF meets skincare type product. After trying hundreds of these products, I've narrowed down these scorecards to five questions. These are the criteria that have helped me make a decision. I didn't even know I needed to know some of the answers to these questions. So hopefully they do the same for you. It always starts with the first question, which is all about ingredients. I do a quick scan of the ingredients here. I am not a cosmetic chemist, so by all means, check out the full review back on the site. I did a really deep dive on this one. I kind of went down the rabbit hole when I was researching. It's a vegan, cruelty-free, gluten-free formula. Also alcohol-free, soy-free free 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 and it has non nano zinc oxide in here 13.22% not 21 not 23 Two, two. For broad spectrum coverage, it has a PA rating here as well. I talk about that on the website. It's a Japanese-based rating system. Some people swear by them. Some people are like, whatever, just give me SPF 30. Check out the post because this review would go on for Ever. So the claim here is that maritime botanicals, algae, reduce redness, shield from blue light, help protect from pollution and photo aging. I do not have a lab, so I cannot prove any of that. But I do love seeing moringa and grapeseed oil at the front of the list. My skin is a fan of those just because my skin likes it. Doesn't mean yours will, but it's very hydrating and non-irritating for my skin. A couple of things I want you to know here. There's a coconut oil derivative also higher up on the list. If your skin does not tolerate that, then this might not be the best option for you. I did not have any irritation, like I mentioned, and my skin can be pretty sensitive, so I was happy about that as well. And then a final quick heads up here, there are essential oils in this. They're at the very bottom of the list. If you can't tolerate those or coconut oil, it's going to be a pass, but for the rest of you, let's move on to the next question. Application, so lightweight hydration is what it's all about. This really is an SPF. You really do need to shake this up, but it is very liquidy and it feels like an oil. I have it on right now, so I'm doing like like kind of hot touch test. It's really lightweight as an oil. That said, it did not sink into the skin for me immediately. So some oils do a little bit better than others. Sometimes they feel a little bit heavier and oilier. Sometimes they don't, right? So jojoba oil feels very different on my skin compared to coconut oil, yada, 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 you get the point. Only thing about that is for sunscreen and sun protection, I love how it glided across the face and covered everything. Some people like to load up on the product. I don't put a ton of it on, but if you like to put a lot more of the product on, this is going to be very oily. If you are one of those liberal application people, LAP, We'll just give it an acronym because like everything else has an acronym. Might be a little too oily for you, something to think about there. If you have a dry skin, this might be wonderful for you. I was thinking I could really get into this when temperatures started to drop. That's just me thinking ahead. It received a three out of five on the scorecard. Next up, all about the finish, right? Specifically with SPF, does it have a white cast? Does it leave white residue? Not at all. And Mara evidently has a signature glowy finish that they offer. I'm not as familiar with them, so that's great. I would say it held up to that claim. It does look slightly glowy. It doesn't look dewy. When I think dewy, I think wet. This looked more like a glow. You'll kind of see it on the application, but it's very subtle, which you will see as well. Like I tried to do different angles so you could see the reflection, natural light. I'm doing more application demos in natural light so you have a better sense of it. it wasn't really like a say slip tint if you're thinking about that kind of a dewy glow. So if you don't want that and you want something a bit more subtle that livens up the skin, this product absolutely gave that. Compared to the 11 product that I tried, the Venus Williams product, which like pains me because ugh, Venus Williams. <laughs> Oh, I love her. Yeah, I wasn't as big of a fan of that. This really won me over. I received a four out of five on the scorecard. Two more questions and these can be deal breakers. So the next one is all about scent. Some people can't handle scent. I'm one of those people that usually I can't handle scent. Claims to have a neutral scent. Guess what? It's very neutral. It's very subtle. It's just 
fresh and clean and kind of earthy, but it's not like a musky earthy. You can barely smell it, whatever it is, totally not offensive. Received a five out of five on the scorecard percent. Perfect, and it followed through on the claim. Finally, a wear test. So with SPF, it's a little bit tricky. You're not really looking for the product to last all day. You do need to reapply every two hours. It's recommended by the brand. If you're reapplying this every two hours, it could get a little tricky. I will say it blended very nicely with products that I use. And while I wasn't in direct sunlight for longer than 15, 20 minutes max, whenever I was wearing this, I just do walks or something. I'm just kind of sad when you think about it. Maybe I'll change that someday. Maybe I'll just be a camp counselor. I don't know, I digress. SPF has a lot of moving pieces. Different people want different things for different skin types. This is a bit more subjective, but because it is an oil, I felt like it held on nicely for a couple of hours, but when I'm outside sweating, this really wasn't holding on super well. And if I applied more to get more coverage, I feel like it would have slid off even more. So it's not gonna be the thing that I reach for if I am going to be in direct sunlight. I will rarely do that. I'm usually wearing a hat if I do that. The PA rating is high, which is good. It's protecting from UVA rays, more so than UVB, which is why people really like that rating. Also, they feel like the ratings in, in the US are just total BS because a lot of companies, unfortunately, have been recently called out on sunscreen ratings that once tested by a third party, don't stand up. They've failed miserably. So. It was really tricky for me to come to like a high or low score. I kept it in the middle, three out of five on the scorecard, which, which brings us to the final score, which is 15 out of 20. A lot of products are getting 15 out of 20 lately. I don't know why, but it just seems to be happening. So what about my final verdict here? <laughs> would I buy this again? Would I, well, would I buy it for the first time? Would I recommend it to a friend? I really liked that it was lightweight. I liked that it had a lot of antioxidants in it. And I liked that the scent was neutral, left no white residue on the skin whatsoever. I really liked this primarily as a primer and moisturizer underneath makeup. Do I love it? Is it a must have for me? It might be, I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence. I'm just not sure yet. I just don't think it's a must have, but we'll see. This is one of those where I need to just keep it on the counter, see if I keep reaching for it. I definitely liked it more than the 11 by Venus Williams. I'll tell you that much. I also have my current SPF favorites live on the site on the Brits Fix landing page. So make sure you check that out. They're all there for you, all the faves of the moment. That's what the scorecard says. That's my opinion. What do you think about this SPF oil, serum, algae, kale, SPF, PA, all the things? What do you think about it? All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching this one. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to see future reviews. I'll see you right back here real soon. Until then.